So, this is start phase of the uh, Airfix uh, Nakajima uh, B4, B5N1 um, cockpit together. It's come together. It's pretty much all of it except for a few little bits. Very easily, in all fairness. I do like the quite chunky construction on this. Uh, sprayed it first put down a, a white base with a Tamiya white then sprayed it with the um, model air green zinc uh, chrome 71094 uh, then a little bit of highlighting to go with that um, added seat belts just made out of plain old masking tape inadvertently broke off the control column so replaced that with a metal pin that was a bit cack handed on my behalf um i like yeah i know people say it's chunky construction but i do personally like the way it goes together um there's meant to be a decal for this but you'd have to take off all the raised detail and sand it back and i actually think the knobs and switches and looking at the colour of the decal, just with a bit of dry brushing, these come out okay in my mind. So, I didn't apply the decal there. Um, as you can see, I've already prepared it, because it's going to be displayed with the wings folded. These are fuselage sides, again, sprayed same method. I painted the interior of the window frame there because that's just a big block of clear which looks a bit odd particularly if you can see down inside um, these colors give it a little bit of a dark pit when you look inside it and one thing I have noticed is that on these spare drum magazines you can see the green of the top edge so I may put a bit of wash here just to sort of hide that um, a bit that so when you look down you can actually see on the replacement machine guns that they're not dark along the edge so that's going to need to be addressing that. that's quite visible um, instrument panels seem to go on without any difficulties and I can't having test fitted I can't see any major issues there um, the base is going to sit on is this uh, I've already checked it does sit on that quite neatly I'm gonna have to look at um, scoring this up with um, the carrier deck planks and working out how I'm gonna do that probably do the longitudinal scores initially then a few cross cuts and uh, tie down put in the tie down points as well so I'm gonna need to find the Japanese carrier deck reference images online engine nice little single bank uh, radial with the uh, exhaust plumbing and I like how they've done that that you put it on and then cut that off not expecting any major issues there and the uh, sprues for mounting this up so personally yeah I like this how this has started um, it's one of Airfix, Airfix's newer kit newer even than the Blenheim and so I do like the way it goes together all credit to these guys for what they're doing um, especially types like this so uh, just please I wish they do more Russian aircraft you know can we have a new FX MiG-21 no but not the MiG-21 uh, F oh, 13 but something like a MiG-21 BIS would be really nice um, Maybe uh, Ravel will release another one. I don't know. Uh, <coughs> so, happy enough with the progress. Bit of a dark pit when I've done my test fit on this. And um, things I'd like to know is, is there any like padding around the edge here? Now, trying to find decent reference images is proving a little bit challenging. Um... I might have to lighten some of the tones here and do some very assiduous or, or dry brushing with a very light touch to it. Um, it's just... Okay, even with the wings folded, they'll be overlapping on the canopy. How much you'll see in is another matter. Anyway, enjoying the start of this and sort of cracking on with this build. 
and this is also for the um, Saturday Night Crash um, BJ Day uh, group build. So it'll be my second build for it. So here we are getting on with this. Um, fuselage is largely together. Bit of filling and sanding here and there. Um, I'm going to hit it with a base also to check the uh, state of the uh, seams. I'm going to have to take that one off there. I just put, uh, topped something off with a little bit of uh, deluxe products. But anyway, this hasn't really stuck to any gap. Um, so now getting on with the first phase of the painting because it's going to be built with the uh, wings folded there on separate uh, pieces so I'm going to start off with a grey um, assess the seams and other elements uh, and then layer up with a black and use that as a base um, for the uh, main metallic um, once that's on, I'll be looking at the uh, the red on the tail and progressively going through the various colors and building this up. Because it's a naval aircraft, it's not going to be excessively or heavily weathered at all. It's going to be kept fairly clean and I'll have to, uh, I'll try and keep the panel lines fairly restrained. Um, as I'm going to be painting silver on black, that may be the opportunity for the uh, engraved approach. Run the blade a point across along the um, panel lines, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, Navy aircraft, because of salt water corrosion, tended to be kept uh, cleaner than, or tend to be kept cleaner than ground based aircraft. So uh, you don't want to go to town on. Um, or go overboard, dare I say, use the expression, on the uh, filling and sanding side. And yeah, that's a bit of a filler mark there that I need to take off. So that's where we are. Uh, as I say, next step is getting my base uh, airbrush on. So here we are. I've been throwing myself at making the base. I'm reasonably happy with how I've painted it up. Uh, started off with um, building it up with some pre-shading using um, khaki, uh, thin down deck tan, white and brown and then put another layer of thin down deck tan over the top of it so that's okay. I scribed out the lines uh, just using normal scribing techniques to get the planks in and uh, one of the area I had a bit of a challenge with was the tie downs where that helped secure the aircraft. Um, I tried initially to just mark them on and it looked crap so I ended up making them using I think this is five or six mil plastic tube with um, a pin put through them. So you have these. So I've made the uh, 12 of them that will go on the deck and they'll be set into these holes that I've uh, drilled out um, not to full depth so I'm going to paint these up and then super glue them in here and we actually have some fairly realistic tie downs and when I put the aircraft on here I may end up taking a guess at where the tie down points would be but I would imagine it being on the main undercarriage so I'll have the aircraft sort of secured to the uh, deck um, as well that's what the goal is so happy with the spraying happy with the uh, grain that's just using the normal um, scribing tools and the tools with the pins and that side um, these and I got drills in them we're working on this and opening up these holes and making a set of Japanese carrier deck tie downs God, that's something you, you never expected to do, be doing when you're a model maker. Okay, so that's progress on it. That's the approach, and we'll see how it looks. I'm going to paint these um, a dark colour, a dark metallic colour, and pop them in. 
and see how it looks. Probably put something dark. Actually, no, looking at them, I'll keep it the, the wood colour underneath. Because they do have like a clear surround. Now, these may be too deep. I don't know, I'll try not to have them sitting too deep on the deck, though. So, I'm not sure if these are the right size. This is fairly approximate in a way, but I think they look about right. And they are reasonably equispaced. Right, well, painting is now well underway. Um, basically, it was a grey um, lower coat, uh, black main base, and that's with a semi gloss balak, and then uh, Vallejo <coughs> uh, silver. This stuff. As the main metallic coat so starting to look get there um, one thing and I was a bit in two minds about this there's a natural join here and here to me it just looks a little bit too pronounced even though there's going to be the anti-slip um, markings along there so I used a bit of very heavily thinned down um, Deluxe Products Putty There's the residue of it left there Put that in, let it dry And then wiped it back um, I'm not going to run a silver seam over it Because we're going to get the uh, uh, Decals along there um, Also after applied the silver in two coats um, Sealed it up with a coat of Johnson's Clear just to give it a little bit more robustness for handling and a bit of additional protection. Now, panel lines. I am probably going to use uh, my uh, needle method on them to bring them out. So they're not going to be too heavy. I want to keep them quite fine um, and crisp. I don't want this to be a heavy affair with wash and that side of it. It's not going to be too heavy. Basically, it's not going to be too heavily weathered um, on this project anyway. Uh, I'll add some exhaust staining and a few other uh, footwear chipping, that kind of thing. Next step is going to be for weathering, for um, painting the uh, tail surfaces in that uh, wine red. Um, uh, now, that's going to be a little bit interesting. I've been looking for paint for this. And I think it's something like hull red, which I will lighten up a tad. Um, either that. Dark vermilion, that seems too light. So it's going to be dark vermilion, light darkened, or hull red lightened. And actually come to think of it, because I'm work, I don't need much paint for this. Um, I may end up uh, working with the model colour Dark Vermilion with a couple of drops of Model Air uh, Black Grey. See what, what that where that takes us. Or I've got Hull Red here as well. A um, couple of, actually that because it's Model Air lightened may well be the best best path for this um again because it's dropper bottle you can just really get this tiny amount so you're gonna have to take a bit of time over the masking this lot up so can you sort of leave it now overnight i just want everything to cure properly uh before we move on to the next stages so all fairness lovely kit with the way it goes together um the upper fuselage seam, well, it just isn't there. It just fits really nicely. Uh, gonna have to mask up the canopy, but this is gonna be display um, with all the open canopy options. So that's.
these pieces. Well, that's a theory anyway. So something like that. So everything nicely. Opened up to the max. We'll see how it goes. Um, I have to take my time over the masking them. I must admit, I was going to tackle that today, and I just thought, no. So, quite happy with those, with the way that's gone. Handle it with care. Look after the paint finish. The base, happy with this. I'm happy with the tone. I'm going to have to add two tie downs. One there, one there. Um, make two more, add them. Because they, to me, they just are visually missing. I know they are to the edge of things. I'm going to have to take a bit of care with cutting, particularly that one. Uh, but it needs two more tie downs added to it, and then I'll be happy with that. The way the tie downs are going to be used, I believe that there are straps. Rope will go from somewhere on the underside. Now I'm going to make the assumption that it's going to be fairly well outboard, so around here. So you're going to have a pair of uh, cables probably in this sort of orientation um, running from a point under there to a pair of tie down points on the deck and uh, possibly one coming off the tail uh, and there will be wheel chocks put on there as well so she's harnessed down on the flight deck so the thing isn't rolling around and all the rest of it. So that's what we're looking at with this. And uh, having fun with it. So, time for another update on this. Right, I have been having some fun with this one. Um, <sighs> decals are okay. But... And they go on reasonably well. They do need... You do need to take your time over them. Um, plenty of microset and microsole. Now that's the top panel. And they need to be left overnight to settle down. And then also run the blade along the panel lines as well. And be especially careful where they overlap with the flying surfaces. So you don't get that bridging. So that's something definitely to pay attention to now. When I come, I'm leaving this overnight and then all the panel lines should, should show up nicely on it. So I'm quite happy with that. A small point. The color of the decals and the shade of the red on the uh, instruction sheet don't match up. I went to... Um, the War Games Store in Brimstage to get my paints for this, looking for that port red um, paint for the tail. And as you can see, very different shades. Now I ended up, once I then started putting on the decals, I realised that there was no way the uh, decals and the tail surfaces matched up with what I painted them. So I've had to sort of carefully mask, and I did this using um, post-it notes and held down with Tamiya tape. Because if you put Tamiya tape directly onto the decals, they're going to come up. I've already put these stripe and side Hinamaru uh, on. So I had to remask, and then using uh, thin down um, red RLM 23. Um, no, not that I used, sorry, tell the light. I used Dark Vermilion, uh, which again I thinned down so that's uh, model color as opposed to the model air 70947 uh, Dark Vermilion, which seemed to come close to that. I first put on another coat of silver. Uh, and then sprayed this over it in a few coats. Now this I probably over thinned, uh, but I also put in Flow Improver, 
and it seemed to bring the color of the tail and you can see a little bit there just on the edge I'm going to tidy that up uh, later the differences in the shades so something to look out for now the instruction guide states using matte wine and I have I've really got to draw a question to the um, corp color call outs in this with regards to these shades of red follow it and work off that it's just not going to match up with the decals now other option would be to spray on the Hinamaru and the stripes yourself and I think that's perfectly doable measure them up use a circle cutter masking and for the basic decals that's that would work fine uh, but you really I think you just need to use much more something like a matte red um, a flat red maybe even uh, to me a XF7 um, to match up with the decals otherwise it's just going to look off in my mind um, so it's coming along reasonably well and uh, step by step I think I've got the torpedo now down to a level that I'm happy with as well it's not perfect but it's not too bad I'll have to paint the uh, shackles and the support separately. So I think by the end of this week, um, we should have this completed. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you with, I'll be perfectly happy. As I said, I'll be more than happy with that. I'm still in two minds about the level of rigging on this. Um, I don't know whether... I'll just have the one uh, aerial wire or whether there's going to be the side aerial wires as well. What I seem to get is indication of, I don't know whether it was both the uh, post to the tail or uh, along with the um, wing to uh, the horizontal stabilizer uh, rigging, whether that was used together. I, it, there's just nothing particularly clear about it. Um, in some diagrams it shows that there's both together, in others it's one or the other, and I'm just not sure about that. Um, particularly as the uh, wire on the wings actually attaches to here, uh, that point, which means that when it's folded up, it's actually going to lose a lot of its tension. That being closer that so it would actually have a sag in it um, it's a case of maybe do you attach it no you can't yeah you take it like that from there that distance shortens um, so how the rigging wise presented I may actually end up doing both because it's difficult to do uh, I'm just not entirely sure. Uh, what I don't fancy doing is drilling a hole where through the decals, because you're going to uh, really risk messing those up uh, if something happens with the super glue. So I'm a little bit cautious there. If I do the uh, the pillar to tail, that will be a little bit of a cop out there in my mind. So I'm kind of in two minds about this. Um, when these stripes settle, I'll be taking the blade. To them. I'm leaving this overnight with the uh, microsole um, and then I'll take a blade along the white stripes there and slowly build up these decals. Now there's a lot of panel decals like these that I think are going to be a bit fun. It's interesting that they've gone and put the decal ID number in the center so you really do have to cut them out. Um, or maybe it'll slide off separately, I'm not sure. I think looking at it actually may slide off separately, so that might not be an issue. Um, so yeah, that's um, chugging along reasonably well, I would say. So, a few more nights on this, and we'll be, uh, we'll be there.
paying for that sort of look. Well, We're very nearly there. Um, it's fundamentally painted up, um, weathered, and I've not gone for too heavy weathering, just kept it fairly low key, I'd say. Maybe a bit much on the old stains, but didn't want it to be overdone. Um, I've It's been uh, sealed up now with a couple of coats of XF86, not X86, um, X86, uh, X22 clear. I didn't want to go it, I didn't want to mat it out. I just wanted to keep everything sort of contained as it was. Um, replace the pitot tube with something metal. Um, that might need a little touch up with silver. I've got the supports for the wings when they're folded ready to go I'm gonna do I'm still in two minds about this rigging I may take the cop out because I seem to see images of both arrangements I may just go for the single aerial wire um, yeah you can call me an absolute coward on that but I think that's what I'm doing here um, so reasonably happy with this um, the wing folds that's going to have to be approached very gingerly because these are final super glue fits which always seem to get to me um, looking at them they'll be fairly clear of the uh, aerial post so I'll put the wings on first before I do the final bit of um, aerial wire and anyway I would have to because even if I do the um, wing ones they would run from there to there and then there um so yeah it's one of those things to the taking it to the very end once that's done um i want to do a little bit more work on this base um put in the tie downs that i've missed tidy up that spot there um also mask the base off spray a black rim around it and put a little description plate on here as well um, so that will I don't know if that will be symmetrical but I just want to use the name decals and put a tiny Hinomaru as well uh, create a little bit of contrast on there maybe put a black rim on this uh, to sort of help with the framing I'll use the compass I haven't yet checked whether this compass will cover the full width and looks all like it this may be a little bit entertaining because it doesn't cover the entire width okay goes up to there well I don't want to lose that so hmm, we'll have to see how we approach this um, anyway a little bit more to do on this I'll have to maybe be a bit more ginger on the edging on the framing find some way of doing it maybe we even with a pen uh, i just want to offset create some kind of divider maybe maybe it doesn't need it or should have done it earlier but that's where we are gentle progress and it'll be nice that it will be done before the end of july and that means and it just fits in nicely as I haven't done yet an American aircraft for this um, build I'm probably going to do the P40 uh, next just to have done something uh, from this so that's where we are and uh, on with the work so it's done. Um, attached to the base, I didn't do the tie downs because I just wasn't sure of the tie down positions. So I just put in the wheel chocks. Um, I added a like a small plinth, the Hinomaru, and using the uh, info 
text that was printed on the airfix decals to uh, for the name and the uh, unit and just just gives it a little bit more sense of id uh i added oil stains um maybe went overboard a bit uh also put some weathering powder down because oil things from my experience using either sand or sawdust or principally sawdust to absorb it so i could well see that being put on the deck um to pick up the oil stains um, as they drip from the engines maybe that's overdone there possibly i think it might be a little bit but i feel they wouldn't leave um oil drips un un untended on the deck so it's oil with sawdust um rigging is done that was a fishing line went a little bit better than it normally seems to i couldn't because it came with the aerial pillar um and I didn't see on the reference pics of aircraft with the side rigging plus the uh, pillar to tail rigging. I just decided to settle for that. So overall, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, it's a nice project. I like the way it makes a nice, well, it makes a nice difference. It makes a nice change to present it like this. So I haven't gone too heavily heavy with the weathering on this one, keeping it fairly clean. But there's a little bit there, particularly around the engine, some oil stains, that kind of thing. Uh, so there we have it, the uh, Nakajima B5N1. Um, as I said, I'm moderately happy with the way this has uh, turned out. So... There'll be the usual thing with the photo series and all the rest of it now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the time of recording this, I haven't done the unboxing video yet. Well, I've done the unboxing, I've recorded the unboxing video, I haven't compiled it. So these, the build vid and unboxing vid are going to be compiled and then um, presented in fairly close order. So, here we have, have it. The Airfix B Nakajima B5 N1 on the uh, carrier deck. Loaded up and uh, sort of waiting for the uh, call to go. This discussion comes from uh, Claire, the Warbird Mistress, and there's a link to her channel below. The Kate is a great example of the Japanese resting on their laurels and entering the war with what they thought would carry them through a year or two. Uh, as for uh, heavy weathering, they continued to through to 1944 on the front lines and were never really fully replaced by the Jill, except uh, that the opportunities for deployment were fewer. Had the Japanese had far more carriers uh, or more active anti-shipping campaign where merchant raiding was concerned, they would probably have both stayed in service. The Kate was a bit overrated for an aircraft that fits in better with the Vindicator and Devastator than the Avenger or Barracuda. In fact, she was only tw 20, mile, 20 to 40 miles an hour faster than the Devastator, but was a much more reliable um, had greater range and versatility. She could drop her fish without having to go painfully slow at wave top height. That was more to do with the torpedo technology than the actual aircraft, as the Kate still had all the issues common to the Japanese aircraft regarding fuel tanks and armour. On top of that, there was no standard forward firing guns, except a few runs of B5N1s with twin or single firing 7.7s. The Jill was a great recce platform, reaching, reaching upwards of 300 mph when unloaded at a maximum power, and but still lacked the forward firing defence and strafing potential, even though she had the uh, tunnel turret, tunnel gun similar to the Avenger setup. When you look at the Kate, it was basically what they had at the time that could launch a torpedo that worked and could be launched from a carrier. The Kate was outdated at the onset of 1942, hopelessly outclassed by um, by the dawn of 1943, and the fighter pilot was not at a standard that could provide proper protection. 
To keep the Kate was appropriate for a fleet with many medium and light carriers and no better torpedo delivery uh, airframe available for fleet defence. Once the fleet was relegated to reserve action, the Kate's only role was as a level or glide bomber. And yet that was never appreciated sufficiently since no forward armament was made standard. And they were not used to close uh, support, a concept the Japanese totally neglected, or even harassment rates. The Jill suffered from the same deterioration in Japanese air potential and myopic approach to the role of the level and torpedo bomber. When first tasked with anti-shipping duties flying out of Rabul, the escorts were almost useless and the strikes were fl- fruitless. I've often wondered if the quality of torpedo manufacturing had slipped by then. In her main engagement in the Philippine Sea, it was infamously an abattoir of hope. The tides had turned by then, pilot quality had diminished, and the mission profile had changed. The Jill was never in a position to be more than an opportunity for Japanese air crew to faithfully give their lives for their country in an efficient way that was an- amicable to the Allied calls. The mass air battles of the earlier campaigns were no more. Also, the Kate and the Val were not being sent in 100 plane raids like in the Guadalcanal struggle, as my early underrated video on James uh, Sweet USMC describes. The Japanese uh, should have focused on improving the Betty's uh, protection, making her the primary torpedo delivery platform. Since not only could the Betty outrun the Kate and be almost equal in cruising speed and combat load, Jill, but she was had a tr- tremendous uh, range, plus two motors and multiple gun positions to improve survivability should escorts prove to be um, of a caliber less than pristine. And that was by Claire the Warbird Mistress, and there's a link to her uh, channel in the description section of this video.